Good day, fellow learners. Once again, welcome to another learning and teaching session with your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapus. And this time around, we're going to discuss case number five. But before we do that, may I once again knock on your kind heart to please join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application and review to 100 nurses, mostly from the Visayas and Mindanao. We've been successfully doing this for the past two years. And we have, in fact, granted 106 scholarships last year. We'd like to do more of these. So to help us achieve this goal, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. And please don't skip. Thank you very much for doing that. I also would like to make this advisory. Dr. Ray Gapus, that's me, and the mentors of the Ray A. Gapus system are not part of another review center named Gapus Review Academy. You don't see me there. So if you want to see me, if you want to join my class, please look for the Ray A. Gapus system class, where you will meet our mentors who are all U.S. licensed, headed by Mentor Che, Mentor Francis, Mentor Missy, Mentor Shantz, Mentor Marisol, Mentor McLean, and Mentor Nicole, our mentors for the Philippine team of the Ray A. Gapo system. And of course, yours truly, 60 pounds ago. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the first question that you need to ask yourself when you're preparing for the NGN or the next generation NCLEX RN test would be to be able to identify and define what are the things that you need to study. The best intervention for that need is for you to get an expert opinion. So you have to make sure that the people who are coaching or mentoring you are U.S. licensed and they are experienced in terms of facilitating passing of Filipino nurses. So let's move on to next generation NCLEX RN case number five. And before we do so, let me share with you our conversation with our recent passer, she just actually got in touch with me. Her name is MJ. Hello po, Sir Ray. Good evening po. Kamusta po? And I said, I'm good. Nakapasa na po ako ng NCLEX last June 10, 2024. So she passed the NCLEX last June 10. And she says she just waited for the official um, announcement at Nurses or NYSAD. Thank you so much, sir, for everything that you taught me, especially during the mentoring. God bless you. Good health and long life. And I said, wow, congratulations. And she says, thank you, Sir Ray. And I asked her, which part of a review helped you the most? And this is her response. Everything, sir. Comprehensive review. She attended two cycle. She attended twice online in terms of the quick fix. And she attended quick fix three times face to face. She read NCLEX 311 book a day before the exam. And she came here to do her NGN simulation our, at our simulation room, and she read all the rationale of the questions in the core shells, the Pecha Kucha, and the YouTube videos a day before her exam. And I said, wow, she followed the success recipe of most of the passers. And she says here, hi, sir, good morning. Everything uh, the chin counted were taught in the program, and there are questions that involve four possible diagnoses, and you need to choose which one. Uh, she says that seemed to be the favorite of NGN. And then there were more than 12 NGN questions, meaning case studies that are either long or short. She reached 150 questions for five hours, and she has eight seconds remaining. Um, this is because she said she read the question twice, including the options, and she played after each question. That's why she almost maxed out the five hours because she knows anytime uh, the computer would shut down. And so she reached 150 questions. And she further says that it's a good thing that I reminded her during the last quick fix not to lose hope whenever you don't shut down at 85. And she says, the NCLEX is very tricky, but you are able to decipher the tricks. And then there, were, there are last minute questions that are long. And she had one bow tie. And she says, it's a good thing that you were able to discuss it during the quick fix. And she says, um, she considers the candies here at the center as lucky. And she took one, itch okay for her 
two break times. So, well, that could be the lucky um, ingredient of our success recipe, okay? Having candies from our office. Thank you so much, sir. The best, you're really the best. May you have long life and good health so that you can still help more worldwide. Thank you very much. The Regapos Review System is now being used by nurses from 33 countries worldwide. So God bless you more and your family. Thank you very much, MJ. Now, on to our case discussion for case number five, and we're going to talk about deep vein thrombosis. And let's begin with a functional concept. Remember, a functional concept is a word, a phrase, a sentence, or even a, par a paragraph, an entire paragraph that would help you to set your mind to deconstruct questions. So in essence, it gives you a sense of direction. So let's begin. Deep vein thrombosis occurs when a blood clot forms in the deep veins in the body. So primarily, this could be associated with prolonged immobility. Now, when deep vein thrombosis develops together with, and it leads to a complication where the emboli travels to the lungs. So you now have pulmonary embolism. So when DVT and pulmonary embolism occur together, the condition is now called venous thromboembolism. Now in venous thromboembolism, there are three factors that could potentially increase your risk for VTE or venous thromboembolism. And these are one, immobility, two, high blood viscosity, and three, could be injury to the blood vessel. So whenever any of these is present, then you are at risk. But let me highlight one important risk factor that is immobility, whether you are on a bed rest for a prolonged period of time. For example, you had a fracture because of an automobile accident and now you're in a traction. And so you are on a prolonged bed rest. So that could be one risk factor or when you just have a long flight. Like for example, when you're traveling from the Philippines to LA, that would take approximately 14 hours and that's a risk factor. Okay, immobility therefore is a common risk factor of DVT. That's another functional concept. Now, how would you know that you are having DVT or deep vein thrombosis. So the risk factors include, remember the code swell, smoking, or when you're overweight or obese, so the weight has something to do with it, or when there's history of pulmonary embolism or deep VT or embolism in the family, lack of movement or immobility, then you have lifestyle-related conditions such as heart failure, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, and even cancer. If you've had any of these conditions in the past, your risk is definitely higher. Now, how would you know that you are having deep vein thrombosis or you have developed one? So remember the code leg. So there's leg pain that could be severe that leads to excessive swelling. Now, this is the symptom that differentiates DVT from arterial obstructive disease. Because in arterial obstructive disease, it's either you have minimal or no swelling at all. The main manifestation of arterial obstructive disease could be absence of pulse in the lower extremities. Whereas in DVT, you have excessive swelling. So when there's swelling, just think about a vein that is obstructed. And that would require elevating the legs several times a day to decrease the swelling. And of course, the G in the acronym leg would mean gradual change in skin color on the affected leg. It turns from could be pale to red to purple, okay? That simply means there's decreased blood circulation in the area. Now, deep vein thrombosis or DVT treatment include SME, support stockings. The best time to wear it is while still on bed in the morning before getting out of bed. So you make sure that you wear it and it's usually worn depending on the recommendation of the physician. It could last from months to years. And then of course, medications, specifically blood thinners like heparin or warfarin or enoxaparin and your anti-clotting medications like streptokinase. So these blood thinners would definitely help prevent, your blood thinners will help prevent enlargement of existing clots and prevent the um, formation of new clots. On the other hand, your anti-clotting drug streptokinase will dissolve existing clots. Okay, and of course, 
exercise. Now, clients with DVT should move because immobility increases clotting of the blood. So it's important for the client to move, but they have to be supervised when they engage in exercise. So the diagnostic test that is used as a standard test for DVT would be the duplex scan. So we have to tell the client that the procedure is painless. It involves the use of ultrasound or Doppler to identify blockages in the arteries and veins of the neck, arms, and legs. Now, what are the things that we need to tell our clients when we're going to prepare them for a duplex scan? Now, remember that your Doppler scan or Doppler ultrasound or duplex scan can be used to identify blockages of both arteries and veins, specifically of the neck, the arms, and the legs. So what do we tell our patient? That the procedure is done to detect blockage in arteries and veins using conventional ultrasound and Doppler ultrasound. We also need to tell the client that a gel will be utilized along the area. So they have to wear loose shirts or shirts that open in front and make sure that the shirts or the clothing that they wear is not made of silk. The gel can potentially stain the silk and it's difficult to remove it. Next, provide it, the, the procedure provides a picture of the blood vessel structure and we instruct the client if this is done on the neck like carotid duplex scan to lie down with the head slightly bent backward for the test involving the neck. And of course, we tell the patient that there will be restrictions on smoking and caffeine intake two hours before the test, primarily because smoking can potentially constrict the blood vessels and may affect the results. And clothing should open at the neck, avoid silk and turtleneck clothes. X or there will be no pain, but a whooshing noise will be heard and slight pressure will be felt as the transducer, as the transducer is moved on the area. Now we have to tell the client that the whooshing noise is expected. Now duplex ultrasound is the standard imaging test to diagnose your deep vein thrombosis. Now that's an important functional concept to remember. Now on to our case number five. So a 56 year old postmenopausal client comes to the emergency department after a 16 hour flight complaining of pain and a feeling of warmth in the calf of the left leg, the task progressed and became unbearable in the last two hours of the flight. Further examination reveals redness on the affected area. History reveals use of birth control pills before menopause and hormonal replacement therapy after she was previously diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. So, you would notice that within the case, you get to see a lot of risk factors. You have your postmenopausal client uh, on a 16 hour flight having pain and a feeling of warmth in the calf of the leg. So, that could mean there could be a clot that is formed in that area. And the area has some degree of redness and previous history reveals that the client used birth control pills. Of course, that could potentially increase blood viscosity. The client also had hormonal replacement therapy. That's another risk factor. And of course, she had a medical condition, ulcerative colitis, which is one of the risk factors that we have identified a while back. So here is the question. The nurse should prepare the client for which of the following diagnostic tests. You would notice that from the case, you are now being asked about the diagnostic test. So colonoscopy definitely is done if colon cancer is suspected. Pap smear is done as a screening test for cervical cancer. And your D-dimer blood test identifies the degree of clotting um, of your blood. So the higher the D-dimer value, the higher the possibility that your blood clots faster. So the normal D-dimer for adults could be less than 250. So the answer to this question, therefore, as we have discussed, is your duplex scan. Okay. So join our hundreds of thousands of pastors from more than 30 countries. And recently we have a 60-year-old. Her name is Jane Janeo Serrano, who passed the NGN. So join them and the others. If you want to pass NGN, there's only one way. It's the Ray Gapos way. I'll see you. So the second 
requirement if you want to pass NGN is you have to learn how to navigate technology. Here at the Ray Gapo system, you have tools that are superior and these are all published by world-renowned publishers like Mosby and Johnson Bartlett USA. We also have our own app and learning management system that you can purchase separately if you want. It's on promo, it's just $29, and that would leave you with unlimited access until you take your test. And of course, the third and the most important is that when you are preparing for your NGN test, make sure that you are in a learning environment that's conducive to keep your focus. And here at the Regapo system, we have our own NGN simulation room that you can use for free. And we keep our classes at a manageable level in terms of the number of participants. So may I invite you to join me, the next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the next NCLEX RN next generation type. So your choice of live face-to-face -face class or live virtual class, you can do on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, plus the use of our QBank and my three books. Plus, definitely you're gonna meet me personally and I will coach you so that you'll learn the NGN strategies and sample questions. Plus, you can join my Quick Fix live virtually or face-to-face. The fee starts at $3,499. So once again, this is your mentor, your fuck check buddy, Ray Gapus, at your service. See you in our next video. Take care.